Here we are in the jungles of Cozumel. Join us in the Story of Liberty for this exotic tour. Right here in the jungles of Cozumel. It's great. Fifteen nineteen, uh, actually the uh, day of the cross, uh, that the first Catholic mass was held here in Cozumel, right down uh, the road here, and uh, uh, the great General Cortez, he actually had the guts to demolish all the Mayan temples. It took a lot of courage. He did that, and he brought Christianity into this island. He brought Catholicism into this island. Uh, and he actually did what was scriptural. He tore down the false al altars and built a church in the very spot where the false altar was. We're on our way over to the uh, natural spring on the island that the Mayans held their sacred. The water. The only difference in between now and before, now we got what we call it a verba cosmos system where we can purify by the water. Back in the 1600s, the Mayans, they had no way to purify the water. So that's why it's easy to not and recognize the Mayan people or Mayan descendants. Why? Because they're short, big head, non neck, big belly, short leg. Because this water contains eight times more calcium, a lot of minerals, and a lot of sulfur. So instead of making the most grow for them, it make them real thick. So that's why Mayan people or Mayan descendants are short people. All of the sinkholes got three different levels of water. Salt water at the bottom, brackets in the middle, and very fresh water on the top. The deepest part is over there on the corner, which is about 68 to 66 feet deep. And all of them are connected to the ocean by underground currents. No, familiar. A lot of people on some of the sinkholes where the cars go, we are allowed to swim on them, but not on this one, because there's no way to get in and get out of the water. But on the sinkholes, a lot of people ask us, how come you guys are swimming and the humans remain on there? Well, here on the island, they don't sacrifice humans, they sacrifice animals. All the human sacrifices were made on mainland, as you probably heard about Chichen Itza, Playa del Carmen, Cancun, and all of those places. Cozumel is known as a fertility island. Many so people from Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, El Salvador used to travel on canoes up to 11 people in a canoe to make an offer to the goddess of the moon, love, and fertility, which is Seychelles. Once they got here around February, they had to wait six months for them to go back to the regional places. Why? No boats with Moran and no planes. So in six months, that's when the current changed ways. They used the sea current to go back to the regional. Not good when your four-wheeler breaks down in the jungle. Hey man, what do you think of this place? Awesome, man. Got you, huh? That's why I ask you to keep your helmets on. Watch your cabeza, okay? Watch your cabeza and your step, okay, familia? Here we go. Got to bend down in here. Wow, they were short people, huh? Yes. Very short. Look at this. That's the ceiling. Yeah. There's some sunlight out there. Wait. Up in the 1600s, the Maya was so smart, mathematical astronomers and architects. They were the first one to invent the first weather predictor, which is a house made out of rocks. It has four doors and four and uh, a window on top of each door. And on the very top of the cupola or dome, there's uh, 12 cone shelves infiltrated into the cardinal point, which is north, north, east, south, and west. How does this work? The wind goes center of the doors, out through the window, and into the top of the cupola or dome. It starts making a twist with the wind, and it starts blowing all the 12 cone shells at once. So from that point on, the mines got 10 to 12 hours to find a place like this. How come they didn't drown? Because when they started getting a little bit of water on the floor, they used to use the those big old shop bags to suck up the water. Yeah. <laughs> they started, when they started getting a little bit of water on the floor, they used to pull holes on the ground all over the ground with wood stick and rocks. It makes the water drown faster to the second underground cave or a sinkhole. We don't know what's underneath this until all of this collapsed. How do we know that? We be dry and we stump on the ground. You will hear how hollow it is. Cozumel had emerged from the ocean when the famous asteroid made an impact on Earth and got rid of the dinosaur, which landed on the peninsula of Yucatan and made a huge crowd on the ocean, so the water level started to drop down and whatever was close to the surface of the ocean, it emerged from the ocean. That's how part of Miami, Cozumel, and part of Yucatan, it emerged from the ocean. All of these highlands, at one point in life, it was part of the coral reefs, it was one underwater. So that's why on some parts of the walls of the ceilings, we can see seashells incrustated into the wall. How come Cozumel became, hence to who, or whom Cozumel became famous for diving? 
Because uh, Jack Cousteau was the first diver to come here to the island and start showing the people how to use the tank for diving. So thanks to Jack Cousteau, he became famous for diving in Cozumel. Before he left, he declared this as a diving paradise. Nowadays, Australia is the number one, the number one best coral reef in the entire world. Cozumel is the second best coral reef in the entire world. One point in life, all of this place and hold about 200 to 300 million people. Those big rocks that you see over there, it was part of one full cave. So made it, whatever was holding the rocks, it made it collapse and now makes it look into two caves. I'm going to show you a little bit uh, how, come, how do we know there is a, all of this was underwater at one point. We have over there what we call Nemo, Mexican Nemo. Look at this. This is truly in the jungle. Yep, that's what he said. Jacques Cousteau was here in 1960. The jungles of Cozumel are active today. And it was in 1527 that Don Francesco gave this island its Christian name, Cozumel, 1527.